To reveal the entire map of the lands between in Elden Ring, you first need to find a total of 19 map fragments, which each uncover a portion of the game's many regions, both on land as well as deep underground. Some of these map fragments are well hidden and difficult to find, requiring progression through secret regions or triggering specific events in the storyline before those areas become fully explorable. In this video, I'll be detailing everything you need to know, and I've purposefully structured this guide so all 19 map fragments are presented in order of recommended player and weapon level for the associated regions where each fragment is located. Therefore, as a side benefit of following this guide, you'll also grasp a good sense of optimal progression in terms of difficulty. A quick shout out to the FextraLife.com wiki website, which I'll be pulling all the detailed maps from to use in this guide, also linked in the description. Everything you'd ever need to know about Elden Ring is there, so make sure to check them out after this video. The very first map fragment you should pick up is Limgrave West, which is located near the gatefront Site of Grace, a short distance north of where you first enter the lands between. Being the starting area of the game, Limgrave West largely serves as a great place for beginners to brush up on basic combat techniques, as well as farm some runes to gain a few levels before venturing deeper into hostile territory. The second map fragment is Limgrave East, which is located near the Mistwood outskirts site of Grace. Enemies in this area are tougher than in Limgrave West, so don't venture here too early until you've cleared much of the western area. It's also a good idea to clear most of the Stormhill area at this point, which is located just north of Main Limgrave. The third map fragment is Weeping Peninsula, which is located near the Castle Morn Rampart site of Grace. Weeping Peninsula is located to the south of Limgrave, at the very southern point of the lands between. Enemies in this area are slightly tougher than in Limgrave East, so is a natural progression after clearing much of main Limgrave as well as Stormhill. After clearing Limgrave, Stormhill and Weeping Peninsula, it's then a good time to tackle Stormvale Castle, the very first legacy dungeon of the game. Here you'll face off with Godric the Grafted, the first Shardbearer demigod boss, whose great rune will raise all your attributes by plus 5 when activated. This will then lead you to the fourth map fragment, Liurnia East, which is located near the Liurnia Lakeshore site of Grace. The fifth map fragment is Leonia North, which is located near the Academy Gate Town site of Grace. While exploring central Leonia, it's also a good idea to clear the second legacy dungeon of the game, the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Here, you'll also face off with Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, the second Shardbearer demigod boss. Her great rune, which does not need to be activated, will grant you the ability to respec your character's abilities using a larval tier. The sixth map fragment is Ainsel River, which is located near the Ainsel River downstream site of Grace. Ainsel River is an underground area that can be accessed via the lift at the Ainsel River well in eastern Leonia, just northeast of the eastern tableland site of Grace. Bear in mind you'll only be able to explore the small initial section of Ainsel River when descending the lift at the Ainsel River well. The larger portion of Ainsel River is much higher level, including the Lake of Rot, which I'll be covering how to reach for the 13th map fragment later on in this guide. The seventh map fragment is Leonia West, which is located near the northern Leonia Lakeshore site of Grace. While you're here, it's also a good idea to clear Caria Manor, which can be found to the northern end of Leonia. Here, you'll face off with Royal Knight Loretta, and upon victory, you'll gain access to the Three Sisters subregion behind the manor, where you can meet Renna and begin her lengthy questline. The eighth map fragment is Siofra River, which is located near the Siofra Riverbank site of Grace. Siofra River is an underground area that can be accessed via the lift at the Siofra River well in eastern Limgrave, 
just southeast of the Mistwood outskirts site of Grace. Bear in mind you'll only be able to explore the western section of Siofra River when descending the lift at the Siofra River well. The eastern portion of Siofra River, located beneath Kalid, which includes Mogwin Palace, is a much higher level area, which I'll be covering how to reach for the final 19th map fragment of this guide. The ninth map fragment is Kalid, which is located near the Kalid Highway South site of Grace. While exploring the southwestern portion of Kalid, it's also a good idea to visit Redmain Castle, located on the southern edge of the region. Here, you can trigger the event to face off with Star Scourge Radan, who's located in the Wailing Dunes and is the third Shardbearer demigod boss in the game. When activated, his Great Rune raises maximum HP, FP and stamina. Once you've cleared much of the southwestern portion of Kalid, you'll then want to travel back up to the northeastern end of Liurnia. Here, you'll be able to gain access to the region of Altus Plateau, where the 10th map fragment is located, near the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace. To reach the Altus Plateau, you'll either need to acquire the two halves of the Dectus Medallion, allowing you to activate the Grand Lift of Dectus, which is located to the northeast of the East Rhea Lucaria site of Grace, or if you don't yet have the Dectus Medallion, you can instead head down the ravine, which leads to the Ravine Veiled Village, located at the northeastern tip of Liurnia. Climbing all the way to the top of this area will eventually take you out onto the Altus Plateau, after a boss fight with the Magma Worm Makar at the top. The 11th map fragment is Deep Root Depths, which is located near the Nameless Eternal City site of Grace. Deep Root Depths is an underground area that can be reached by travelling through Nokron Eternal City, which is only accessible after defeating Star Scourge Radan. To the northeastern end of Nokron, you'll find the Siofra Aqueduct. Here, you'll face off with two bosses, the Valiant Gargoyle and Valiant Gargoyle Twinblade, one after the other. Once defeated, the Great Waterfall Basin site of Grace will unlock, and you can then climb into the open coffin nearby, which transports you into Deep Root Depths. Alternatively, you can travel to Deep Root Depths via a secret hidden passage, which doesn't require killing Radan, but involves far more complex exploration within the subterranean Shunning Grounds, located deep below the Lanedale Royal Capital. The subterranean shunning grounds can be reached by descending down a well located a short distance northwest of the Avenue Balcony site of Grace, within the Lanedale City. For some reason, unlike the other underground areas, Ainsel River, Siofra River and Deep Root Depths, which all have their own separate map fragments, the subterranean shunning grounds does not. The twelfth map fragment is Mount Gelmere, which is located near the Road of Iniquity site of Grace, not far from the main entrance to the Volcano Manor Legacy Dungeon. As a side note, progressing the Volcano Manor questline will grant you the opportunity to face off with another Shardbearer demigod boss, Rykard, Lord of Blasphemy. When activated, his Great Rune restores 80 HP plus 7% of your total HP upon defeating enemies. The 13th map fragment is Lake of Rot, which is located in the western area of the underground region Ainsel River. The fragment can be found a few feet south of the Lake of Rot shoreside site of Grace. This higher level, larger portion of Ainsel River can only be accessed during the final stages of Renner's questline, via an unlocked gateway teleporter within Renner's Rise Tower. This tower, along with Renner's questline, are found in northwestern Liurnia, in the Three Sisters subregion behind Caria Manor. Alternatively, you can travel there by climbing into a coffin located at the northwestern section of the Deep Root Depths underground region. The 14th map fragment is Dragon Barrow, which is located in northern Kalid, a short distance east of the Dragon Barrow West site of Grace. You can run direct to this Grace from the Summon Water Village outskirts site of Grace, located in northeastern Limgrave. The 
15th map fragment is Lanedale Royal Capital, which is located near the outer wall Phantom Tree site of Grace. To reach the Lanedale region, you first need to gain access to the Altus Plateau, which I've already previously explained for the 10th map fragment, Altus Plateau. So feel free to replay that section if you need a reminder. The 16th map fragment is Mountaintops of the Giants West, which is located near the Zamor Ruins site of Grace. To reach the Mountaintops of the Giants, you first need to acquire the Rolled Medallion, which activates the Grand Lift of Rolled, the only way to access the snowy mountaintops. The complete Rolled Medallion is given to you mid to late game by Melina at the Elden Throne site of Grace, after defeating Morgoth the Omen King and failing to enter the Erd Tree. And guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. The 17th map fragment is Mountaintops of the Giants East, which is located near the Giants Gravepost site of Grace. To reach this Grace from the ancient Snow Valley ruins, follow the path shown here. The 18th map fragment is the Consecrated Snowfield, which is located near the inner Consecrated Snowfield site of Grace. The only way to reach this northwestern area of the mountaintops of the Giants is by acquiring the two halves of the Halig Tree Secret Medallion. The completed Halig Tree Medallion will then grant access to the alternate location at the Grand Lift of Roll, the hidden path to the Halig Tree. Following this hidden path will take you directly to the Consecrated Snowfields. The final 19th map fragment of this guide is Mogwin Palace, which is located near the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance site of Grace. This map fragment uncovers the eastern section of the underground area Siofra River, which can only be accessed using the Pure Blood Knight's medal given to you by White Mask Vare at the end of his questline. Alternatively, you can travel to Mogwin Palace by a gateway teleporter found on the western edge of the mountaintops of the Giants. This portal is located just northwest of the Yilao Anix Tunnel in the Consecrated Snowfields, and activates only after defeating the nearby Sanguine Noble NPC Invader. <laughs> 